Hello and welcome to tonight's LOL Esports Roundup, where we cover the uh, games from today in the LCK and LEC, and then preview tomorrow's series in the LEC Season Finals tournament that they're doing. Predictions, 273-131, went 2-0 on the day. Uh, got this one accurate, D plus 3-1 over HLE. Showmaker, 18-4-21, 37% of damage in the mid lane. Canyon, 7-7-35 seven, seven, in the jungle. Kingen, 8-6-13, uh, 31% of damage in the loss. Um, so HLE's top side did actually outperform D pluses. This 31% is not a... Uh, not one of those situations where it was still less damage than Kana. No, the D plus top side, uh, very piss poor in the DPM department. Um, now, as far as mid lane is concerned, Showmaker blew Zeka out of the water, and bot lane was a bit of a wash. Um, Canyon was my MVP. A lot of people might pick Kellen for his performance on Alistar later on in the series, but I thought Canyon was integral from start to finish. I thought he had very timely steals. Even in their game one loss, he took a couple uh, objectives from Grizzly. He outplayed Grizzly in the most important times, and I thought that his rel was just as good as Kellen's Alistar um, in, in terms of just ability to play. Can Canyon looked very good today as a facilitator. Um, Showmaker, he got the Silas into Zekka's Akali and solo killed him with the Akali ult. So, um, the whole notion that Zekka, if he gets Akali, if he gets Silas, this or that, uh, Showmaker was going to get smoked. It did not happen. Um, Showmaker is still an excellent mid laner, one of the best in the world. Zekka, uh, showing more and more by the series that he is quite limited. HLE now go home, actually, um, after... What was a very expensive offseason, right? Adding two world champions uh, fresh off their wins. Um, adding a new bot lane, Viper from EDG. Returning to the LCK. HLE season being done, it, it was disappointing. Deft returning to the international stage. Um, the only player front... Well, no, he and Pioshik both are, are returning to, to Worlds. Um... As far as the rest of the series is concerned, I mean, I thought Deft had some really good moments. Um, Deft and Kellen getting the better of Viper in life. Like I said, Kellen's Alistar later on in the series was very good. Um, also roamed on the champion. I was able to even get to the top side of the rift to make things happen. Showmaker leaving lane ahead of Zekka to affect the rift. Um, HLE were just steps behind D+. And honestly, game one, D+, lost the game more than HLE won it. Because D+, were in a winning position. Kenyon had done great at objectives um so you know this isn't a big surprise lck four seed entirely possible that they could win worlds d plus were my 2023 preseason world champion pick and that is still alive um you know it just it it, it, it was a bit of a diffy sk bds bds 30 sk i thought this would be close and it was not Crowny, 23, 5, and 17, 39% of damage was MVP. Nuke, 7, 4, 22 in mid. Exekick tried his hardest, but went 13, 5, 8, and 40% of damage. He actually had one DPM more than Crowny. He did match Crowny, so people do need to give Exekick a lot of credit for this one. Um, he, he found a way to be impactful. This 3-0 was not super one-sided. SK did have 30 kills. It wasn't quite like the HLE. 3-0 losses we saw to KT where they had like 7 and 11 kills or, or D plus DRX when um, DRX had 11 kills. It was not that lopsided. Um, but they lose. Uh, in terms of this series, I thought that, um, you know, Crowney just played on another level in team fights. He was excellent. Um, even in the side lane, I think in game two, he solo killed uh, Exa Kick at one point. Just on another level in this one, really performing. Um, and and Exekick, I mean, matched him. But the thing is, like, the rest of the team wasn't there. Like, Irrelevant in Game 1 had a had a flame horizon on Adam by the end of the game. But Adam was more impactful. Irrelevant on the NAR, useless. Adam on the Quesante, Quesante finding something and making things happen. Sheo Marcoon outside of Game 3 on Vi, I thought Sheo got the better of Marcoon. And it, honestly, it was only Marcoon's early game that actually did well in that one. Nuke and Sirtis. Sirtis really struggled. Nuke uh, doing the, doing much better than him in, um, in in this series. I mean, 
there isn't a lot to talk about. I said this yesterday. When there's a 3-0 like this, there's not a lot to really discuss. Uh, SK were competitive, I thought, in games one and three. Game two into the mid game is where they lost it around the Drake, um, losing a couple team fights and really just kind of losing control of this one. But SK are a very young team, that's without a doubt. I think a lot of people do need to realize that. Um, Exekick extremely raw. BDS also a, a young team though, right? So um, yeah, so so uh, BDS 3-0 SK. And then preview for tomorrow, XL Fanatic both. Um, Excel are five and four, Fanatic seven and two. They've played five times in summer. Excel winning three of them. The makeup of these damage shares is definitely different. So Oda Wamne in top lane went 28, 16, 34 with 29% of Excel's damage. Oscar in 10, 16, 31, only 16%. So I think that goes to show you just how important the XL top lane is to their success versus Oscar Rinnan and Fnatic. That's a big diffy, right? Um, Odo is not a carry-oriented jungler, but yet in these five games, that's what he's been. Sorry, top lane or not jungler. In the jungle, Peach, 6, 12, 62, 14% of damage. And then we have Razork, who went 16, 15, 32 with 19%. And this isn't one of those deals where, well, they had close in damage. No, Razork had about twenty to 25,000 more damage across five games. Um, so he did have more DPM, more impact in terms of a carry-oriented player. Um, so that's not a surprise, though, right? We, we, we saw Peach this year. We saw Peach, especially in summer, start to thrive as a facilitator. Uh, Malrang light, if you will. So, you know, when you look at the top side, it's... Um, 43 versus 35, so uh, XL's top lane is more important, 43% of their damage, where Fnatic only 35%. Mid lane, Abadage, 25, 10, 36, 29% of damage as well. Humanoid, 13, 24, 35, 26% of damage, so pretty close in damage, but Humanoid obviously dying a lot more, not getting as many kills. Patrick and Limit, 25, 25, 88, and 28% 28 of damage. So an even damage spread really between top, mid, and bot lane combined. Um, we're Fnatic, Noah, and Trimby, 24, 29, 69, and 39% of the damage. So it's clear that XL have an even damage spread between those three areas. We're Fnatic, it is definitely bot side, far and away the leader then mid lane, and that's really all they're offering is carry-oriented positions. Um, Razork and Oscar and not nearly as much, 35%, I mean, between two players is not good enough um, when you're including your top laner, right? You need your top laner to do more, um, to offer more. I would like Oscar and to, to look good tomorrow um, in Odo, but the last time they played XL did win three to one. So, um, I mean, that is a thing. Um, I, I think that this series shouldn't be a 3-0 like that one, um, but we'll figure it out. So that's it for the roundup. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. Hope to see you again tomorrow.